Welcome back to the Grey Lounge. Uh, those who may have joined later in the series perhaps don't understand what I'm referring to. This is the lounge of Andy Gray, and it's where we've been recording Keys and Gray for the last, what feels like, eternity, really. Ten weeks. Ten weeks, is it? Ten weeks. Okay, our guest today we will introduce you to shortly, and uh, we intend to have some fun as well in conversation with uh, one of the most highly decorated teddy bears of all time. I find that difficult to argue. Both as coach and manager? Yes, yes. He's okay, up there. He's from up the there. newspapers, uh, all accurate at the time of going to press, uh, we record in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these will be overtaken by events during the course of this day. Um, not, not this. Yesterday, um, France's highest court blocked relegation in Ligue 1. Mm -hmm. They have turned down the appeal to play on, but they've said those at the bottom will not be relegated, leading to the conclusion that there'll be 22 teams playing. So they're, they're allowing promotion up? Yeah, but they're not letting teams go down. So that's a compromise. This fascinated me yesterday, partway through the day when the story broke. Manchester United's friendly against Stoke cancelled at the 11th hour after a positive coronavirus test. At this point in the day, 10, 11 o'clock, nobody knew what the problem was. It later transpired Michael uh, that Michael O'Neill, mm. the Stoke manager, had coronavirus. Come back to that. Uh, here are pictures of thousands gathering in the world-famous Broadgate to celebrate Coventry's return to the championship <laughs> as champions of League One. <laughs> thousands? Oh, tens of thousands. Well, how dare they? I thought you might pick up on world famous... No, no, I just ignored that. <laughs> well, <laughs> just well, how ignored. dare they? That's, that how is a they? very serious point. Yes. That they shouldn't have been. And that's my concern, as you know, and has been all along, about the celebrations that Liverpool's title success will spark. But there we are. It happened. It's not the manner in which I think Coventry or their supporters want to be promoted, but it's the Let best solution. Let me tell my, you. My, my, You're taking it. We're taking it, but it is tinged with sadness for me because Mark Palios and Tranmere have gone go down, down. Yeah. and, and I, I don't like that. And uh, Darren McAntony, I said to you, would well, not I'm be just happy. about to mention it. Uh, yeah, okay. a great picture here of Barry Fry. Yeah. Disgrace, he's called the decision because Peterborough, mm -hmm. on the points per game metric, dropped out. have dropped out of the playoff places. And, and Barry Fry makes a very interesting point. He said the EFL have been a disgrace throughout this process. <laughs> Fry told the Peterborough News. Uh, just last week, they arranged for four clubs that they knew were going to be in the playoffs to be tested for coronavirus. Uh, they did this before today's vote, and those clubs had returned to training before wow. then. It's a very, very interesting allegation. So they knew before they had the votes it, what they were going that's, to do. That's his or were allegation. They, or were they just saying, just in case the vote goes this way? No. Okay. And I'll tell you why we know that, because they'd have gone to Peterborough, <laughs> yeah. who were in the four that we should have been playing off. Uh, somebody's off message here. Uh, story in the Daily Mail, Saudis planning tune over all. Uh, why I say they're off message here is uh, this fascinating sentence. The takeover of Newcastle United is led by the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman. That is something that group have been denying all the way along oh, the line, right. <laughs> that they are at a distance. Evidence players have taken a 50% wage cut. Saw that. Well done, top lads. Always a good club for EFL that. EFL clubs in £21 million refund to their fans. Okay. Refund, that's across mm -hmm. the championship the and the two leagues, yeah, yeah. For, for seasons uncompleted. Um, Mark Palias has said he's going to take legal action. I don't no think chance. he's going anywhere, Mark. No chance, Richard. I don't think he expects Much that as we like Mark, I don't think he's got um, any chance. Uh, in conversation with John Barnes yesterday and Dwight York the day before, there aren't enough black faces, people, mm -hmm. uh, within the game. Les Ferdinand is the man the players want at English football's top table, according to the Daily Mirror, who have written a really good piece, uh, headlined The Fiddle East, um, a lot of stories about the proposed takeover of Newcastle mm -hmm. and the reasons why it shouldn't happen have been in the heavyweight papers yep. in the UK. And in Newcastle fans maybe have not been able to get their heads around the problem. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's spelt out in the Daily Mirror, which is available to all. Mm -hmm. And I think this story will give you some... And by the way, one last time, I did not say I wish this group were taking over any club other than Newcastle, no, you other did. than for the purposes no, no. of saying... It would give me. You wouldn't have to talk about Newcastle. I find myself in confrontation with supporters of the club again, because of that reason. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't say I wish it was any other club. I refer you back to previous blogs and statements I've made on the subject. It, it can't happen. I very much doubt it will happen. And if it does, there'll be um, a lot of questions for the Premier League mm -hmm. to have to answer. No. It was, as you say, Michael O'Neill, Stoke's boss, that sparked the United virus chaos. Now, where my mind went with this was. How did they know? I was unaware that there was a test that you could take and get immediate results back from. And if that is the case, all the resources we're putting into starting the Premier League again in a season that will see Liverpool finish champions, United mm -hmm. fifth, and, and, and Bournemouth or West Ham going with Norwich or Villa, 
Oh, why are we oh, not sorry you put Villa down? Why are we not putting those resources into opening schools again in the UK, which seems to me to be a far more worthwhile case than than restarting Premier League football for you're six ask, weeks? You're asking the wrong person. I don't know. I'm not a politician. But I'm, we're losing a generation of know. children, Andy, who the British well, no, government have said no, yesterday. No, 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 but we're listen, shutting the schools until September now. Listen, has, why? Think, I'm you, sure there's more you people. You sat there and advocated shutting the schools in September since the day we sat here. I, 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 absolutely. Yes, well, it's a so decision doing I agree that. with. It's wrong. But it's wrong because of all the resources that we're putting at starting football, when if we've got that available, that resource, it should be made available to schools and getting children back, which in my opinion is far more important than getting four or five weeks of football finished. Okay. Point made. Um, oh, there are too many here to, to, to get too <laughs> deeply in. Um, England's top clubs lost a billion wow. in 2018-19, the season before, before? last. Oh. A billion. How can you do that? Well, <laughs> by not running your business How properly. How can we do that? A billion? A billion. Uh, wow. Gareth Southgate talking yesterday. Uh, he's very proud of his young players, mm -hmm. and particularly Raheem Sterling. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you can understand why. It was a press conference from home for the media the in masses. general. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's just about what, what um, we have available from the newspapers today. Mm -hmm. So uh, our guest, Andrew, mm -hmm. I've got to mention a couple of, uh, couple of days ago um, from a former playing colleague. Yes. Um, the scenario is they're both at Aberdeen. They're both a little frustrated. Uh -huh. They both want to go and play in England. Yes. So they hatch a plan whereby they'll go and see the manager, right. Sir Alex Ferguson, and together, right. but, but separated, they will tell Fergie... Confront them. Yes, we're off. And they're going together. They're, well, they're going together. They're but, not going one after... I mean, what I'm saying is they're, they're totally committed to each other. They're totally committed to each other, but, but one of them is going to see Fergie and the other one's going to wait behind the door listening to what happened. And then go in later and back them up. I imagine so. Yeah. Anyway, here's the story as it unfolded for us. So we're standing there at the door and... I said to Big Alex, who's got to go first? You know what Big Alex like? He talks at the side of his mouth. He's always when people up when you... Uh, he went, I think you should go in first. Um, you did really well. You the big really brain well set in the back. The World Cup. I knocked on the door and I went, Gaffer, can I, can, I, and, uh, can I speak to you? Aye. Sit down. <laughs> so, I thought, something's wrong here. Right. So he, he didn't even ask me what I was wanting. And I said, listen... Me and Alex, I've been, you know, I think it's time for me to move on. And then I've been here five years, blah, 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 uh, blah, blah. And he just stared at me. He's not saying anything. <laughs> anyway, I was trying to take out the swear words. What, officially, what he did was he said, listen, go forth and multiply. <laughs> right? <laughs> and take that big da 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 <laughs> who's standing well with you, because she's not going either. <laughs> All right, I go. And I've got, the, oh, there's no noises going on, screaming and shouting. <laughs> so I went out the door. I'm looking for Big Alec down the corridor. <laughs> <laughs> so I never seen him. I never seen him for about two days because we'd have a day off after that. So I, said, oh. I, said, I said, where did you go? He went, oh, that got a bit nasty in there. And just, I'll, I'll, go and see, I'll go and see him next week. He stayed another 15 years. <laughs> the, pro the prosecution has yes. no more allegations, Alex McLean. What is the defence? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard all the, the shouting behind the closed doors and I thought, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> and did you ever go back in and consult Mr Ferguson? Andy, at the end of every contract, um, I was supposedly getting a move to England and, um, you know, I, I, Jill drove me down and I think it was 86 and uh, this was after the Gordon incident and, um, you know, I, I said to Jill, I'm going to go and tell him I, I fancy a move to London and we had been linked with Tottenham Hotspur. And uh, I go in to the office uh, with a bit of trepidation, no no agents in those days. And um, he said, Alec, I'm going on holiday Monday. I want this contract sorted out before uh, I go away. I said, oh, boss, I'll, I, I thought it was a great one. I said, I'll just wait till you come back. You know, and I, I thought I could uh, get everything in motion in the two weeks that he was away. 
Um, he says, no, no, I want it done now before I go on holiday so I can get peace of mind. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I said, um, listen, I, 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 I bottled actually saying I want to leave <laughs> Aberdeen Football Club. So I, I, I then changed it into a money thing and I said, I don't think I'm getting paid what I deserve. And uh, he said, you and Wally Muller are bleeding this club dry. <laughs> he said, <laughs> he said I'm, I'll give you an extra tenner. And he put his hand out. <laughs> he put his hand out and I, I took his, shook his hand. <laughs> and and uh, so, so I got to the car after about an hour. 40 minutes or something, and uh, Jill's waiting on me in the car, and she said, uh, right, well, are we going to London then? Is that a new venture for us? <laughs> and I said, I think I've just signed a new three-year deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but the good news is, Jill, I got us a 10-quid rise. <laughs> <laughs> the, a ten the irony, of course, Alex, uh, is that he subsequently left uh, to go and manage in England. But uh, is it, is it the later. case? Yeah. yeah. But is it the case that he had an agreement that he wouldn't come back and poach Abedonians, not yeah. least yourself and Miller? Yeah, yeah. There was an agreement. And I think um, well, what happened was that <laughs> Three the, way, the way Sir Alex explained it to me a few months later, or, or me, no, it was maybe a year later because he left in 86 and it was actually... A couple of years later, and he, he said, Alec, you know, he, he, he had an agreement to, that um, Aberdeen would let him know about Joe Miller. Joe Miller was was a precocious young talent at the time, and Sir Alex uh, always liked him. And he said uh, to, to the Aberdeen chairman, if you let me know about Joe Miller, then uh, if you're going to sell him. But they sold him directly to Celtic, never... Um, let anybody else get a, get a chance of that and um, Sir Alex said he made a phone call to me he says Alec they, they broke an agreement that's it all bets are off I'm coming for you and I says oh brilliant you know so that was o over a couple of weeks and I, I went in and see Ian Porterfield who was a manager and he yeah. was you know he, he, he had quite a good um, you, you know uh, rapport with the players and he always under he said that look it's good for you and your family then i'm not going to stand in your way he said but i can't say the same for the board of directors um so in those days you know we never get away in free transfers there was always a caveat there was mm. there was a a fee to be paid you know because they, they own a part of you which um obviously the bosman ruling uh, sorted all that out but uh it wasn't a quite Bosman era then, and um, the, the the fee kept crept up, and Sir Alex went to about one and three quarter million pounds. I think it was one seven fifty, and he said, "Alex, look, look your age, your age, and I, I don't know, it was twenty nine, I think tw twenty nine. And then um, he said, I, "I can't go anymore," and it just came to a you know a kind of halt, and mm. uh, it, it <clears throat> stopped me going to Man United. So anyway, I got on with things and uh, Aberdeen didn't let me go. But two two weeks later, Alec Ferguson bought Gary Pallister for two million from Middlesbrough. Oh. He, he was just young at that time. He was 20 yeah. years years of age. He, he had a difficult start, but he became a legend. So, you know, I guess in the end, you know, he, he, he got it right. And, he generally um, knew what he was doing, but, didn't he? Yeah, he generally did, yeah. He knew, he knew a player's limits. Yeah. 1.75 million was more than enough for the big man. <laughs> well, I would, only, I would only have lasted a couple of years, I suppose, but at that level. But um, but then, I, I played till I was 35, so right. I, I could have gave you an 80 a wee bit do you, of uh, Do you regret service. it, Alec, the, the, the fact you didn't play in England? Well, well, I had. Um, I always tried to look at it, Richard, as um, saying, you know, I'll, I'll always wonder, but I, I'll never regret it. I don't want to go with that word regret. Mm -hmm. And then I said, when I became a coach, manager, stroke manager, that um, any opportunity I got, I was going to, if, if I thought it was going to be better for me and, and 
mm. rating on my profile. Um, then I was going to take that, and so I, I kind of did that in my managerial career. Did you have to work harder, Alex, being a coach, stroke manager, to convince people in England that you could do the job because you hadn't played there? Yeah, I think so, Andy. I really do believe that, and. And he, even now, you know, I, I sometimes you feel you don't get the credit you deserve uh -huh. because a lot of a lot of the jobs are firefighting in a respect. You know, in terms of your money, your your being your, your mission is partly um, get a success, but make sure that we we get the wages down a wee bit. You know, and there was a lot of that kind of stuff in it. You know, it gets to you in the head a wee bit and. <laughs> um, you know, over over a period of 15, 20 years, then, you know, yeah, yeah, the firefighting. I would love to have had um, access to the millions that they have in the Premier League just mm. now, yeah. which yeah. is quite, quite absolutely frightening. I mean, you had the same job at Aston Villa as Paul Lambert, yeah. which was uh, keep us up. And that mm -hmm. was the that was the primary objective. Redu I think, reduce always. the wages. But yeah. Reduce the wage bill, mm -hmm. and, and and that's a very difficult yes. equation. But but do you do you regret leaving Birmingham to take the Villa job in any way? Well, you know, I, I was at a, a kind of um, crossroads with Birmingham because um, you know I, the the owners wanted to to bring in players that I didn't approve of, um, and I I felt that. I couldn't work under those circumstances mm. and I, I thought you know I've, I've always worked along the lines of you know if, if even if the the club put a player into me and I would I would scrutinize it and you know look at look at all the the pluses and, and decide yeah okay he, he's okay that's a great call well done but the, these ones were, you know, being forced upon me, and I, and I thought, no, I, I can't work like that. I just felt that there was, uh, you know, I had to leave, and I thought, right, it, it was a great um, period with Birmingham. I loved the people, I loved the staff. You know, Julia Shelton was was um, she she worked with the SVA very closely as well, and she she was the secretary in there, and and it, you know, not only my, the guys that worked with me on the field, but we we. A fantastic administration mm. team, and uh, it was just a one happy family. Uh, and unfortunately, we never quite um, did what we we um, were were supposed to do. We we spoke about maybe spending more money and um, making sure that we could uh, last in the Premier League for a few years. But you, you know, it just uh, came to a halt. Uh, it wasn't bad, and, to be uh, fair. I mean, winning the League Cup against Arsenal at <clears> Wembley—that that in yeah. itself was uh, an enormous yeah. contribution to their history. It was amazing, and, you know, beating Arsenal and we prepared so well for it. We had a free week before it. Um, Andy Watson, and Peter Grant, my coaches were, we, we, we were all talking heads in, in the week and deciding what, how we were going to go about it. We, we, um, we saw a game, Barcelona played one of the, Rus one of the Russian teams and the Russian team had put quite a good rear guard defence on against them. We didn't quite go that far defensively because we played uh, some good football on the day and within two minutes, Lee Boyer was running through on the goalkeeper. He got pulled, pulled down. The goalie brought him down and uh, the linesman just didn't quite see it and it would, it would have been a clear sending <laughs> off. But didn't quite see it. it, like it. it. <laughs> but, but we... That that was that was within five or ten minutes. So our intent was clear. We didn't go to Wembley just to be um, passengers. We went there to success. go and win that game. It's a great success. Hey, hey, can I let me ask you then? Uh, because there's something I don't know, right? I know what it's like to win a major trophy as a player. I know what that felt like, right? But I don't know what it felt like to win a major tournament as a coach when I've coached 11 players or 15 players and beaten a better team than me. You've done both, Aberdeen. Yep. Ma massive trophies as a player. Birmingham City, underdogs, Wembley, Giants, Arsenal. Is there a difference in satisfaction between the two? Can I just add, before you answer, a, a, a fair few trophies at Rangers as well? Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm, as a player. I, I know, yeah, well. okay, I get the analogy, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah winning, winning that trophy was, was uh, you know, extra special because, you know, we weren't given a prayer. 
No. And, you know, Arsenal were clear favourites. And, uh, you know, again, sometimes you, you feel, you, you know, even the, even in the in Birmingham uh, City Centre, we thought that possibly we'd be able to do a bus celebration. And I, and I felt that that was deprived, you know, it was deprived of the players because I think they would have got a wee feeling because it, when, when they won trophies at Aberdeen, we, we did bus, the bus tour of the city. I know that it's only a one club city, so there was kind of safety fears um, in Birmingham. But we, I, I thought, I think it, it en enriches the players and enhances their um, mentality it when, been nice. when they do that kind of the, thing. The problem is, the pro problem is, Eric, in, in Birmingham, of course, again? Well, you've got a council there that's run by Aston Villa fans. Quite right. I mean, we had, I don't know what your problem is, Eck. We never had any problem celebrating at the Villa. Trust me. We had bus tours all the time. It was, it was a con great. It was a contentious move across the second yeah, city in England. Yeah, very much Could so. Could you imagine ever walking out of Ibrox to go and take the Celtic job? <laughs> um, yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I think I'll answer I that. No. That, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that um, the, you know the, that uh, people pulses would be so high in different oh. cities, you know. But uh, yeah, that that is really you're right. The, the rivalry between the two clubs was something I never accounted for, and uh, you know it was a tough season. Um, we I think we saved about thirty million, shaved thirty million off the wages. There you go. Stayed in the Premier League. You just can't do that now. No, no, you, just no, you can't. can't. Do that. Two spells as Scotland manager. Any regrets about how the second one ended? Yeah, it was. It was. It was tough. It was. I didn't. I wasn't enjoying it the way that I did the first stint round. I don't know. Don't know why. Um, you know, I, I did want to go in. Gordon. Gordon had a good spell. He got it so close, and then. I, I decided to change things a wee bit in terms of personnel and start to look at young ones. And I thought, well, I've got I've, I've got some time to um, experiment, you know, and to to you know try different players and see if they can fit the bill and step up to the plate. Obviously, the the Scottish league is is not as strong as it used to be, and and that mm. that's a factor. And a lot, of, you know, there's only one or two players at Rangers, normally you get four or five from the old yeah, firm yeah. Um, in, in both teams, from both teams. Celtic were kind of the, the major factor in, in supplying players for the national team. But uh, in my first year, I never really got those guys because of the pre-season. Celtic haven't had a very tough season. I spoke to Brendan Rodgers, tried to communicate with all the managers. Uh, and then I, I thought, right, you know, I'm going to try different players, and mm. for a year, we, you know, we took we took some some beatings in terms of um, playing against top teams like Belgium and Portugal. Mm. I thought the tougher the challenge, the better, because it will teach the guys that you know who are playing at domestic level that you you can't dally on the ball. You yeah. have to do things quickly and much much quicker at international level. And the, and there was some lessons learned, you know, um, and and. Then we, we, we got the qualification done with the, the, the mini group uh, with Israel and Albania. And, uh, you know, that, that was a wee highlight. And then, Absolutely. you know, we come back to the Kazakhstan game and we, we were just all over the place. And yeah. um, we, we, from, <laughs> from the last game in, against um, Israel, the, the next game against uh, Kazakhstan, there was six players missing from the team that won against Israel. Six players, you know. So no, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to. It was no, difficult no. to keep the momentum. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I, you've nothing to beat yourself up about. Ali. Nope. Uh, glorious spell as 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 coach and manager at uh, international, and I'll never forget the one in France. Yes, McFadden. Um, but uh, now, listen. Thank you yeah. for talking to us and putting the record. Uh, half straight on, on what happened when Strack went to see Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> big brave centre back. Yeah, big brave centre back. I love it, Eck. <laughs> Alex, stay safe. Stay safe, big man. We look forward to seeing you soon. Love you, guys. It was a pleasure being on. A Thanks, pleasure being Alex. on. Thank Cheers, Paul. Alex Thanks. McLeish. Um, yeah, I, I met, maybe that, what he said there slightly underestimated the depth of the feeling in Birmingham between 
St Andrews and yeah. Villa Park. I think if you don't you know, know it, about. if you don't know it, and I knew it, obviously, I only saw that happen, I think, once before, I'm right in saying, when Ron Saunders did, went the other way. Mm. And the height of his powers at Aston Villa, he decided to join Birmingham City. Dwight York, Amazing. of course, played for both, and I think there are other examples. Yeah, you but had... I don't think Dwight, Dwight didn't go from one no, to another. No, he didn't, but you, I think you, that's slightly you different. had the chance, didn't you? Yeah, Graham Taylor foolishly offered me the opportunity <laughs> to go inside for Birmingham, and I gave him short shrift. Sorry, Graham, <laughs> God, God rest his soul. Great coach, great manager, but he should have known better than to ask me to go and join There is Birmingham no City. way you were leaving. Not, I would have rather retired, Richard, than gone and played for Birmingham City, I have to say. I would have. <laughs> I, 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 sorry, in those days, there were certain things you just didn't do. What, what if the opportunity had come to leave Everton for Anfield? No. No? No. No. For me, no. Because of the two unbelievable years, not a chance. Not a chance. Good lad. It's a rare commodity. It's called loyalty yeah. um thank you for your company again today uh join us tomorrow um we're here for how many more days two more days it's wednesday two more days two more days ahead of the big kickoff of course next wednesday with the spaniards start tomorrow got something very special for you we're going to be marking the restart mm. of la liga with a well actually andy it, it recently his contribution to football was uh, over the last 50 years um seen as one of the top 10 moments that was. in the game i know i know who you're talking about as well but you in do. the meantime stay in the meantime. safe